Like the Minutemen at Concord and the scouts who opened the American West, the rifle is a part of our history. And today, we still depend on the man with a rifle. For despite artillery, tanks, rockets, and even more sophisticated weapons, the rifleman is still king on the battlefield. It is he who must slug it out at close quarters with the enemy, take and hold ground, and ultimately destroy him and his will to fight. Ever since the rifle was introduced in the American colonies, it has played an important role as a hunting weapon and a weapon of war. The first native American rifle was the so-called Kentucky rifle, made by German gunsmiths in Lancaster, Pennsylvania in 1728. It was designed as a hunting weapon for the frontier. And when farmers and hunters answered the call to arms in the defense of their liberties in 1775, many a militiaman brought his own rifle. Men and rifles. That is the big picture story today. presents The Big Picture, an official report produced for the armed forces and the American people. Here it is, the old Kentucky rifle. Muzzle loaded with bullets wrapped in tallow-soaked patches to ensure a perfect barrel fit. Flintlock ignited single shot. Both its effective range, which was over 300 yards, and its accuracy far exceeded that of Brown Best, the standard smooth bore infantry weapon of the British Redcoats. The Kentucky rifle was the ideal guerrilla weapon of its day. Shoot and scoot, for it took a long time to reload. Although the basic principle of a rifle is still the same, the step from this old ballistic masterpiece to this, the new M14, is a long one. And we've come a long way in rifle design. The M14 is lightweight, gas-operated, magazine-fed, and designed for semi-automatic and full automatic fire. At the automatic setting, its cyclic rate of fire is 750 rounds per minute. The M14 rifle is scheduled to become the standard weapon of the American infantryman. In this age of sophisticated weaponry, we sometimes tend to forget that the infantryman is still the undisputed backbone of the army. Whether in large-scale warfare or in the tense and dangerous world of the guerrilla fighter, it is always the man with a rifle who has the last word. Everything depends on him. A rifle, like any other weapon, is only as good as the man who uses it. Properly trained and employed, the rifleman is, in effect, the ultimate weapon. The Army recognizes this and devotes a good portion of its training program to practice in marksmanship. Rifle marksmen now are made through a system known as train fire, where emphasis is placed on realism in training. The trained rifleman must be a hunter, a woodsman. He must be able to shoot to kill from any position. He must be able to place rapid, accurate fire upon moving or stationary targets. To do this, he must be familiar with his weapon, have absolute confidence in it. Yet, consider that in World War II, from 90 to 95 percent of the young men inducted into our forces had never before fired a rifle. 
Which brings us to the point of today's story. The National Rifle Association, commonly referred to as the NRA, is the oldest national organization of sportsmen in the United States. Organized in 1871, it is a nonprofit corporation chartered by Congress for the purpose of educating the nation in marksmanship, both as a sport and to qualify individuals who may be called upon to defend their country. Since the NRA aids the national defense, the Army has always extended its fullest cooperation. The National Rifle Association has produced a film which you are sure to find of great interest. Let's look at it. Folks are wondering why an old Kentucky rifle like me is being toted around the capital. Look at him stare. Probably lots of them don't see guns too often nowadays. Times sure change. These people ought to take a good look around here. There's plenty of reminders of how much this country depended on firearms. And those men who knew how to use them from our fight for independence through our whole history. Paul Revere charging through the countryside. He hollered, the British are coming. History books don't say, but I reckon he yelled too, grab your guns, boys, and come a running. And men with their guns fought for freedom started the tradition of American sharpshooting, won our struggle for independence. made it possible for our representatives to write some good rules for all of us in the Constitution. Yep, they mentioned fellers like me, too, in the Bill of Rights. No one ever forgot me during those early days. I went along all the way. Nope, we weren't curiosities then. We were part of the family, provided food solve some problems. Brought law and order where there wasn't any. The axe, the plow, and rifles like me kept this country moving and growing. We had our growing pains too, and more of my relatives saw action. 1861, to preserve the Union. with the folks, building, protecting, preserving peace and freedom. It wasn't fun, but it was necessary. Still is. Me? Well, I became part of a gun collection. Made me wonder, sitting on that rack, what do guns mean to folks like you now? Craig Stevens. 
I, uh, I was just getting in a little shooting practice. Jacoby thought I needed it. Now, this is the uh, firing range of the Los Angeles Police Academy. Incidentally, we just fired around 2,000 rounds in that rapid-fire course you just saw. Around the country this weekend, this same type of activity will be going on in some 10,000 shooting clubs. You know, the art of marksmanship is very much alive today. There's an almost universal appeal for the firearm, what it takes to use it, control it. Cool head, steady, disciplined hand of the marksman. Somebody just asked me, uh, what does a gun mean to you now? Well, let's take the case of an actor. Like Hugh O'Brien here as the legendary Wyatt Earp. Or Chuck Connors, the rifleman, instructing his young son. Or Audie Murphy, fighting off the outlaws. Or this fellow. All of us use guns, loaded for entertainment. They help tell our story, and there is a story behind every gun. Here's a familiar story. A boy, Christmas, and his first gun, a 22. A new world of growth and adventure. Think that gun means something to him? As much I'm sure, as the first gun meant to his father and his father before him. And for mother, well, this doesn't seem like a good idea. But dad sees something else. Open country and warm with bonds of father and son. The young man sees a picture, too. The rifle range, learning to be a marksman with Dad's help, and a real straight shooter. The fact that uh, shooting is a great popular family sport today that a high level of marksmanship is maintained and that a continuous program of training and education is carried forth is the result of the work of the National Rifle Association. Oh, hi, Bob. Hi, Craig. How are you? The instructor is Sergeant Bartlett of the Los Angeles Police Department. The nationally accepted standards, techniques of safety and accuracy he's imparting to his students result from the program of the National Rifle Association. Let's take a look at this target and the story behind it. 1871, Ulysses S. Grant, Ambrose Burnside, Phil Sheridan, Winfield Scott Hancock, and since then, many other top leaders of the country joined together to form the National Rifle Association of America. Their purpose? To preserve the art of marksmanship, an objective which has paid real dividends on occasion since. In more recent years, our way of life was threatened. And we joined the fight to put down those who challenged us. Marksmanship helped us survive. And that day of infamy at Pearl Harbor started those long years of war, which placed a premium on marksmanship. We shot our way to victory on the battlefield with the rifleman, the sharpshooter, playing a key role. Today, the carefully controlled safety measures and procedures of an American shooting club may seem far removed from the Lusitania, World War I, Pearl Harbor, or the red hordes of Korea. But the standards for shooting, competitive scoring, and the genuine thrill of participation stem from those early beginnings of NRA and from the tradition of American marksmanship it fosters today. The NRA maintains this program in cooperation with the National Board for the Promotion of Rifle Practice in Washington. 
For today, our top military men, like General Limnitzer, emphasize its value. In any type of military operation, one thing which has not changed is the importance of the soldier's mastery of his individual weapon, fundamentally the rifle. In fact, that importance has increased. Today, the rifle, in the hands of courageous and determined men, trained in accurate marksmanship, still stands as a vital element of our military strength if war should endanger us again. There are other dangers we face almost every day because there are always some bad guys who use firearms in the wrong way, cause a lot of trouble. Our uniformed, skilled police force constantly combat these lawless elements. And there are others who are just careless, dangerous, irresponsible. Both the careless and the lawless hurt the law-abiding shooter and sportsman. Because someone always says, there ought to be a law. May it please the chair. The chair recognizes the representative from the 16th district. <coughs> Mr. Speaker, I have here a bill for the registration of firearms. Despite repeated failure of attempts to disarm the criminal or irresponsible by statute, fresh attempts are made each year to introduce undesirable firearms legislation. Registration will not keep guns out of the hands of lawless and undesirable persons. It tends instead to prevent the use of firearms altogether. In Great Britain, gun legislation of this kind almost brought disaster. The time, 1940. The British Army after Dunkirk facing a terrifying shortage of arms. While the citizens of the Valley of Nation threatened with Imminent invasion from Hitler's forces dug entrenchments in the cities and fields. There were only a few thousand rifles in all of Britain. The British arms industry, virtually legislated into oblivion in peace years, could not supply the needs. 10 Downing Street urgently requested aid from the White House. America responded and sent shiploads of arms to the embattled British and helped turn the tide. But anti-gun laws in Britain had brought the nation to the brink of defeat. To outlaw firearms because they're occasionally misused is like outlawing automobiles for the same reason. It's not this car, it's the careless driver whose foot presses this pedal. That is the object of legislation which tells him not to speed. He eventually pays the penalty for his heedlessness, but he hurts others too. It is generally recognized that improvements in traffic safety will come about through intensive driver training programs and attention to safety procedures. Measures that will make accidents the exception rather than the daily rule. Training is just as important to shooting. The gun, like the automobile, needs an operator who knows how to handle the hardware. The National Rifle Association has made possible the training of thousands of instructors. There are over 40,000 NRA instructors in the United States. They teach the novices. They provide the careful and close supervision you can see everywhere in evidence at the hundreds of NRA shooting meets held every year. As Americans enjoy healthful recreation in the great outdoors to an ever-increasing degree, it becomes important to keep our perspective on firearms control. 
Why punish the millions of hunters who each year escape the crush and pressures of the cities to realize the thrills of shooting in the open field? The novice must learn how to handle the hardware and move in the field. Basic rules of safety are essential, and the NRA instructors are available to guide him. First, carry the gun properly. It's neither a broomstick nor a rake, and should be carried in a prescribed manner. And keep the action open. The novice hunter, carefully observed by his instructor, quickly becomes aware of the rules. Two of them proceed together. Don't point the gun at anything except the target. And be sure of your target. Learn how to navigate an obstacle. Whether a ditch or a fence, The novice hunter is often baffled by the simplest of problems. Learning the answers from a qualified NRA instructor can save him a world of anxiety and earning the gratitude of his hunting companion. Today, there are some 17 million hunters in the nation. And the NRA program provides for all of them the opportunity to learn and be safe. NRA's hunting safety courses are required in the majority of the states before issuance of hunting licenses. Thus, a program that emphasizes safety procedures rather than firearms control makes it possible for a growing number of sportsmen and women to enjoy the recreation and healthful benefits of good sport and good shooting. Similarly, some 10,000 shooting clubs in the United States are affiliated with the National Rifle Association. A typical club is a family affair with all types of shooting. Skeet and trap, as well as pistol and small bore and high power. Here's how millions of Americans spend weekend afternoons. A family affair. And even for the one member of the family who seemed to disapprove at first, well, Mother Two, now a regular weekend shooter, is part of the team. Careful. Aim. Hold your breath. Squeeze the trigger. Not so good. With expert coaching from Dad, you'll someday be a first-class marksman. And it's not whether you win or lose, it's how you hold your mouth. For the Kentucky Rifleman of our day, there is the annual competitive shoot at Camp Perry, Ohio. The National Rifle and Pistol Matches. Here is the World Series of shooters, where the armed forces and civilian shooters, representing every state in the Union, meet once a year to shoot for the top trophy. Here are pistol shooters, from the best in the country to men whose scores, even with a few wide of the mark, 
could still probably top the deeds of most legendary characters of the West. The National Rifle and Pistol matches are steeped in tradition. They started near the turn of the century. Competition is held even for shooters using muzzle-loading rifles, almost identical to the rifles which fought the Civil War. In competition, that is a pageant as well as a contest, the blue and the gray once again match rival. And the accuracy of the old rifles and skilled hands is impressive. Camp Perry is an international competition as well. Shooters from many lands compete as individuals and teams for the honor of top marksmen. For a month or more along Lake Erie, from sunup till the end of daylight, the crackle of rifle and pistol fire echoes along the shores where Commodore Perry won a historic naval engagement in the years when the nation was young. series of shooting. The best high-power riflemen from civilian clubs all over the country. The best marksmen from the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marine Corps, and Coast Guard. The aim is plain, to maintain a tradition in sharpshooting of constant improvement in the marksman himself and his weapon. That is a basic element in the nation's ability to stay strong and free. Stand up as a winner represents a signal honor to civilian shooter and armed forces alike. A few months from now, some of these champions will be shooting in competition in Japan, Germany, Sweden, Switzerland, South America, or perhaps someday in the Olympics. To win a gold medal is good for you and good for Uncle Sam. The trophies are among many the NRA makes available throughout the year to civilian clubs and for individual members to display. A trip to Camp Perry is a chance to see pageantry and skill, an unforgettable experience. The right to bear arms in defense of our country is one of the obligations and privileges of free men. While preparing for that privilege, rifle marksmanship is also a sport which helps develop healthy minds. Self-discipline, initiative, and team spirit, in themselves all valuable qualities and objectives, whether in peace or war. Your army stands in full accord with these objectives and will continue its active cooperation with the National Rifle Association. The big picture is an official report for the armed forces and the American people. Produced by the Army Pictorial Center. Presented by the Department of the Army in cooperation with this station.